Hi, welcome to the next training of SAP FICO module. Today's topic for training is closing activities in financial accounting. When we talk about closing activities, a closing activities can take place as a day-to-day -day activity or it could be a weekly or it could be a monthly and yearly activities. In SAP, generally there are month-end activities and year-end activities, but yet some of the companies even follows their day-to-day -day activities as well. So we'll be fo focusing as a part of closing activities that what are the different activities which should be taken care in day-to-day -day activities part and then what are the different month-end activities which has to be performed and what are the different year-end activities to be taken care of. So in today's topic, we'll be covering first the overview. Closing operations can be at day end, month end and year end. To close the books, prepare financial reports, accruals and reversals, foreign currency revaluations, etc. So as said, the closing activities refers to the closing operations which needs to be taken care. Now the closing operations can be taken care at every day end activity part or it could be a month end activity and as a year end activity. Now in this as per SAP is concerned the month end and the year end activities are an important part for closing. Now as a part of closing you need to take care of the various transactions, the various uh, activities to be done like the accruals and reversals and foreign currency revaluations, some of the activities which has to be taken care so as to generate the financial reports required. So the different key process steps are day end closing activity month end closing activity and year end closing activity. So we'll be moving up to the first process step that is day end activities. Now as a part of day end activities there are certain activities which needs to be taken care of like verification of cash balances. So you need to match the different cash balances which are there with the cash uh, journal cashier and their closing balances are matched with whatever the cash lying with them. The another year end activity is the updating exchange rates. When we talk about multinational companies which have been operating in different countries they need to update their everyday exchange rates because they used to do transactions with various different countries and they have to make payments in different different foreign currencies. So whatever currencies in which they are making transactions they need to update the exchange rate in the SAP system with respect to their company code currency. The another part is gaps in document number assignment and then the invoice number allocated twice then display compact document journal so these are some of the day end closing activities which need to be performed we'll discuss each of them in detail with the SAP system where we'll be looking after each of these activities in the SAP screen how they are to be performed let's see and move on to the SAP system and see each of these transactions as a day-to-day -day end activity part how they has to be performed. So if you talk about verification of cash balance I think even if you could remember that we did cash journal and in cash journal we, we discussed how a cash transactions are posted and how the opening and the closing balances can be looked in FBCJ. So if you execute this transaction FBCJ in the SAP screen, let's see FBCJ enter. So when we execute the transaction FBCJ, it gives you the closing balances for the day. 
it could be for the week or even if you want you can take it for the whole current period so if i take it for the whole for that particular day it shows you that for that particular day what is the opening balances what are the different transactions that took place as a part of cash receipts check receipts or cash payments and ultimately you get to know the closing balances for the same so this is one of the way out of looking after the closing balances for day to day part now if you want to see what are the total cash transactions took place in the whole current period in that case you need to assign the date over here from and to and then you can check after the dates and it can give you an overview of what are the different transactions took place in the month of april in the month of april 2014 so you can see over here we have taken the dates and as you enter on it you will find the balances now that for the month of april 2014 the opening balance used to be this much then this is your cash receipts this is your check receipts as zero and then the cash payments are on the screen and ultimately it shows you the closing balances for the same now if you are dealing with inr it will show you the balances in inr because the company code currency is in inr and if you have the currency as usd then it will reflect you in the usd part now suppose we change it to a different company and want to see for a different company with a different uh, currency maintained let's see changing the company code if if you think that your country in your company code is not correct you can go and you can change that for your respective company code as well so as said you can change your company code in case your company code is different from over here you can select your company code and respectively click on to the enter and your company code balances will be reflected to you so similarly you can have the details of the reports as you wish to have and it will show you your cash balances for that particular period whether it could be for the day or whether it could be for the current period or probably it could be for the current year as well so it's up to you how you want that particular reports to be executed and to be looked and it, the report will be accordingly reflected to you so as you can see i have executed the report for the whole fiscal year 2014 from april 2014 till march 2015 and the opening balances is there there is a cash receipt there is a cash payment and then you can see the closing balances for the same so this is what the first activity you need to do that you need to do the verification of your cash balances which has been lying with you and in the scp system both are reconciled to each other now moving up to the next transaction that is updating the exchange rate so updating the exchange rate basically refers to updating the foreign currencies exchange rate which is been done for with your particular country's currency so what you need to do is you need to go to the transaction ob08 for maintaining the exchange rate now it could be the exchange rate could be that your company code or your country currency basically is dollar so if you do the transaction of uh with any of the european country then you need to maintain the exchange rate for euro and if you are doing a transaction with a japanese country then you have to maintain yen and accordingly the different currencies to be maintained so we need to go to the transaction ob08 enter so this is the screen coming up on the screen to you and in this you need to maintain the exchange rate as you can see usd eur that is european currency and similarly if there is any different currency that need to be maintained so suppose for example i move up over here and 
I maintained the currency as M that is the average currency we did this, this particular part even in earlier when we did the foreign exchange revaluation so you can you can even go back and you can refresh yourself at what this exchange rate type basically refers to then M basically refers to the average price of the currency now from and to currency refers to from which currency you want to transfer or you want to maintain the value with suppose I maintain it as USD to EUR Euro enter and as I maintain you can see there are number of different values already maintained on the screen and if you want to maintain the same for the current period then you can select any of them you can go to new entries sorry uh, you need to copy the screen so what we need to do is again we need to go back and have to maintain M USD EUR enter now what we can do is we can select one of these and we can copy it as you will copy it now you can change the date for which you want to maintain the rate that means the valid from date so whatever the rate you will be maintaining USD against the euro this from a particular date from that particular date this particular currency conversion will be applicable so suppose I maintain it as 1st of April 2014 and I maintain the exchange rate over here as 1.5 that means 1 US dollar is equal to 1.5 euros enter so this rate has been maintained over here now and whatever the different transactions will take place now between USD and Euro currencies now from 1st of April 2014 onwards all those transaction values will be taken as 1.5 and accordingly your euro will be converted to dollar at the rate of 1.5 per euro so this is how you need to maintain the exchange rate and then you need to save this screen and once you save this screen those particular transaction will be saved in it so we can do the same thing over here so this is how we need to maintain our currencies similarly every day if your country's uh, your particular company has got number of different transactions where there is a need of maintaining the foreign exchange rate every day you need to visit this particular transaction and you have to maintain the transaction rate However, in most of the companies, this has been done at month end activity, but in many of the multinational companies, or in any case, uh, if it is a banking or a for or, or an NBFC bank, NBFCs different companies like uh, like banks or financial institutions, in those cases, the currency rate need to be maintained every day so similarly you can go and you can maintain further more of such kinds like if you want to maintain now for the USD to INR that is dollar to Indian rupees then even you can maintain the, that as well so you need to go up over here and you need to maintain as you can see it has been maintained over here that for one dollar one dollar is equal to fifty point six nine rupees so one dollar is equal to 50.69 rupees is the conversion ratio which has been maintained now suppose if you want to maintain it to the current date you can move up you can copy one of these transactions you can change the date from when you want this particular rate to be applicable suppose I make it as 62.15 and I want this to be applicable from again from 15th of April 2014 so now from 15th of April 2014 one dollar will be equal to 62.15 rupees and whatever the different transactions which will be posted in dollar terms will be automatically converted at this particular exchange rate in INR part so this is how 
you need to maintain the currency rates as a day to day and day to day activities part now enter and the rate is maintained over here you can see the number of cop entries have been copied and now you can save the screen over here so once you saved the data is saved so this is how you can update the exchange rate on a day to day basis activity part now let's move up to the next that is gaps in document number assignment gaps in document number assignment basically refers to the sometimes certain documents are skipped the numberings are skipped when we do post it transactions for example uh, you can take that whenever we make any posting of transactions in sap whenever you post a transaction sap gives you a document number at times it happens that sometimes the system internally skips few of the numbers and move up and those number are left blank it happens in a very very rare cases it doesn't happen as a as a day to day part you will find a very few cases in a very rare companies but yet you need to check whether is there any gap in the document number assignment means is there any any number skipped internally by the system due to some or the other problem so that need to be looked and for that this is a particular special standard report provided by sap that is s underscore a l r underscore eight seven zero one two three four two so this particular report will let you know if there is any gap internally in the system and that particular number has been skipped and has not been generated to any of the transactions so to have a look of that let's post that particular transaction so it is s underscore a l r underscore eight seven zero one two three four two enter as you can read the heading of the report gaps in document number assignment so to find the gap you need to assign the company code and then you need to assign the fiscal year for that and if you know that number range or a particular document type for which you are looking for the same you can assign that and you can even even move up to the output parameters it says display numbering gaps starting with specific fiscal year only so if you want for a particular fiscal year you can take that particular fiscal year over here and if you want the display gaps only you can select and that particular gap will be reflected to you so now we can go and we can execute this report and as we execute you can see now on the screen that list contains no data list contain no data means there is no gap of such types in the system so this is what you need to do you need to check as a day to day part or even this can be done once in a month activity part as well it's depend upon organization to organization how they want to take it with so this is how you can execute this report and you can check whether any any numbers have been left so you can see over here every number has been generated you can see now once i have taken this off display gaps only i have taken this tick mark off then it shows all the document number that means these are the different document number which has been used but there is no no gap in them no gaps as you can see and if i want to see only the gaps to be very specific i can select display gaps only and i can execute the report so once i do that you can see there is no transaction there is no document number that means there is no gap in the transactions in the document numbers so this is how you need to you need to check whether there is a gap in the document number assignment or not with this particular transaction moving to the next is invoice numbers allocated twice now as you know that whenever 
we receive invoices from the vendor we do post those invoices in the SAP system and the invoice number is been taken up in the reference field for posting vendor invoices we use the transaction FB 60 or from the MM side MIRO that is MIRO is word used so these are the two transactions FB 60 or MIRO which has been used for invoice posting with respect to vendors one particular vendor cannot have two same invoice numbers because that particular invoice is coming from the same vendor that means that particular vendor must not be repeating the invoice number so in case in a rare case you want to check whether the invoice number has been allocated twice to any of the invoices in that vendor you can check that with this report which says s underscore alr underscore eight seven zero one two three four one so if you execute this report into the SAP system and we can see that whether a particular invoice has been entered in the system twice or not so to execute the report you need to fulfill the parameters over here we need to take the company code we need to take the fiscal year for which we want to check the same and if you know the particular posting date for which we want to check the same you can assign the posting date to it as well suppose I take the the month of April that is 1st of April 2014 till 30th April 2014 for which I want to check whether there is a twice or whether the, the, the invoice number has been allocated twice or not now there could be two things if the invoice has been allocated twice that means it could be the same invoice have been posted twice or it could be that there are two different invoices but the vendor has left the invoice number same in both the invoices so what is the case that need to be checked now so once I have taken this if you want to check it for a particular vendor you can take the vendor over here as well like I took the vendor as 2000 that is the vendor code and if you want to check it for all the vendors you can leave the vendor field blank you just need to select the vendor check mark over here so now moving up even if you want to have the same amount or of a different amount you can even decide that whether it has should have the same document date or a different date even that can also be taken so you can you can have all the options whether I know that the, the the two invoices could be of the same amount then I can select the same amount check mark over here as well but I'm not sure whether it will be of the same amount or it could have different amounts so I can leave that particular checkbox blank and now we can move and we can execute this report so executing the report now as you can see no invoice numbers assigned twice so you got the message over here that for that particular vendor the invoice has not been assigned twice but suppose I take this particular vendor off from over here and now I want to execute it for all the vendors so I execute this report with the checkbox selected over here as vendors taking the same company code fiscal year and the posting date and now executing the report even in that case you can find that no invoice numbers assigned twice so you need to take care of this if you find that any of the vendor has been assigned the invoice number twice that means you need to check back those invoices whether the same invoice has been punched or posted in the system twice or what is the case it may have so this is one of the another day-to-day -day end activity part and the last activity uh, activity which could be one of the activity in date and closing is display compact document journal now what happens is 
we post numerous transactions in a day in SAP system. At the end of the day, the company wants to have a print or a report to know that what are the different transactions posted in the system for that particular day as a compact report. So the company doesn't want or the management does, manager doesn't want the report to be printed, uh, the, the each and every document to be printed separately but he wants uh, a compact report where in a, in, a, in a consolidated way he can come to know what are the different transactions that have been posted on a particular day in the SCP system. So to have that you have the report S underscore ALR underscore 870-12289. This report gives you an, an option to have the list of transactions posted on a particular day, on a particular month or maybe on a date range as you want or as the company wants to see. So how we can do that? Let's execute the report. So as I have taken the report over here, enter and you can see now the, the screen of the report it says compact document journal. In this we need to take the company code. Then we need to take the fiscal year over here as 2014 and now you have the option of the posting date from which to which date you want to see the reports. Suppose I want to see the report for a particular day that what are the different transactions did posted in the system. So I assign the date from April 1 to April 1, 2014. In the further selection part, you need to select the standard documents. There are a number of different documents over here. Standard document Mark document, the statistical documents, sample documents, recording entry, original documents. So what you need to do is you need to take the report for the documents which has been posted in the system. So for that you need to check mark this standard document and in case you want the park document list you can go to park document and you can get the list of all the park documents as well. So we will be taking up only the standard document, the document which has been posted in the system and which has their financial implications. Moving up to the output control, we don't need to select any of these output control in the system. Nothing else is to be needed, just we need to put the company code, fiscal year, posting date and then need to select the standard document. Now executing the report and we'll see what are the different documents posted on this date. So as you can see the screen output has been displayed to you. This is the document number, this is the company code, the document number, the year, then the document type, the posting date as you can see over here and then these are the ledger accounts which has been debited and credited that is the posting key 40 refers to debit and 50 refers to credit and even you can find the document number on the right side even on the left side over here on the screen you can also find the username from which the transactions been posted so similarly if you go down you can further find the a lot of different document number and their details what has been debited what has been credited so these are the different transactions as a summary being reflected to you that you don't need to go and have to print each and every document but just as a summary this report gives you the summary of that particular day the different transactions being posted into the SAP system so even you go down if you move on and we move down you will find a lot of documents been posted with different document number with different document type WA which refers to goods receipt if you go down WE refers to gate entry if you move down RE refers to the invoices been made from the MM module side even you can see the K refers to the vendor and 2029 refers to the vendor code. So vendor 
vendor number has also been reflected to you and the tax code is there then the amount is there to you as well so similarly you can see at the end you will find the, the summary of the detail over here as well that the total number of ledgers been debited credited the customers been debited the vendors been debited and credited so this is a report which is very very helpful at times to have a summary of the particular day or for a particular week or even for a particular month so moving back to this report even if you want you can run this report as you want giving the posting date from and to if you want even you can run the report for a particular month from april 1 to 30th of april as well it's up to you how your company wants and what kind of a reports they want to take up with so you can have a day-to-day -day report from this and even you can have a month-to-month -month or a weekly report accordingly so this is with respect to the standard document in case there are any doc documents which has been posted in the system but in case there are parked document i hope you remember what does a parked document refers to a parked document refers to a document which has not been posted but has been parked due to certain doubts or confusions or maybe the entry is not complete so you don't want to go back and post the entry from the very beginning but in the meanwhile you want that particular transaction to be saved and later on checked and posted so for that we we use the concept of parking even we have discussed about parking in earlier sessions you can revisit that so if you want to see that is there any parked document for this particular date range you can even check the same so suppose i want to see that for the month of april is there any parked document in the system so you need to select the company code the fiscal year you need to assign the date from and to and you need to check box this part document part and now execute the report so once i execute this report you can see no list generated that means there are no parked document similarly suppose i execute this report for a quarter from april to june and executing the same report again and now you can see that for a quarter when i executed the report i found that there is one document which is lying as a parked document in the system so this is just the way out how you can find out the different parked document in the sap system as well so these are some of the day end closing activities which have been taken care in has to be taken care in in the company so as to ensure that the day end balances the day end rates are been maintained and there is no problem and you can close up the day in a good part so you need to ensure that the daily postings are accounted for proper verification of vouchers with generated reports so to have a proper verification of vouchers we we do these all activities that your day end closing activities your day end goes correct and good so this is it for the day end closing activity part now we'll be moving up with the month end closing activities so moving up to the next is month end activities in the month end activity part we'll be covering the different month end activities like updating the exchange rate the gaps in document number assignment invoice number allocated twice so these are something which we have already discussed in the day end activity part the other is open and close posting periods then posting parked documents bank reconciliation automatic uh, recurring uh, automatic clearings recurring entries then uh, in continuation with that is post adjustment entries foreign currency revaluation interest calculation capitalizing auc assets depreciation and then displaying the document journal and financial statements so let's take up each of these activities one by one 
So moving up to the uh, each of these activities in the first updating exchange rate and gap, gaps in document number assignment and invoice number allocated twice. These are the three activities which we have already discussed as a day end activity part as well. So we'll not be discussing these first three activities. Now moving up to the next is open and close posting periods. So posting period basically refers to the period in which we post the transactions. So that means the month in which we are making the transactions. Once that particular month which is referred as period is over, we need to close this, that particular period or month and we need to open the coming month or the next month in the SAP system. So to, if you don't open the next period in that case the users in the company will not be able to post a single transactions in the system. So there is a need to open the next period or the next month as the next month approaches that is uh, the last day or the last uh, uh, day of the last month uh, you need to open the next period. So if you move up to this part open and close closing posting period in the SAP system we need to execute the transaction OB52 so when you execute the transaction OB52 as you can see over here there are different versions been maintained so your version is something which is 1000 for now but whatever you assign in your company code you should know that what is the posting period version which has been maintained so the posting period version is the one which we do as a basic setting part in the initial customization of the of the SAP FICO module so as for the company code 1000 1000 is the is the posting period variant which has been maintained so what you need to do is as we approach the next period you need to change the period over here in this from and to part suppose we are in 2014 so you need to if you are approaching 2014 you need to change the first killer from 2013 to 14 and you need to maintain one that is one refers to the first period that is April 2014 so over here now the April 2014 is opened from and to April 2014 has been opened for the postings so this is how you need to maintain the posting period close so what I did is I closed the last period that is 12 2013 I have closed and I have opened a new period that is 1 2014 similarly once the first period comes to an end what we do is we revisit this transaction and we change the period from 1 to 2 on this side so in that case what happens is the period 1 will be open and at the same time the second period will also get opened so once I do 1 2014 to 2 2014 that means the first period is open and now the second period is also been opened in the system for posting the transactions and in case you want to close the period you can close the period as well and then you can need to save this and once it has been saved your posting period will be changed over here so in the OB52 period you need to you need to come to this OB52 screen you need to know what is your variant and in that you need to maintain your from and to posting period so once you approach a new month you need to extend the posting period to a new period and in case you want to close the previous period you need to from in the from side you need to close that period so suppose I want to close the period 1 in that case I will be making it 2 2014 from 2 2014 that means only the second period will remain open in the system so this is how you need to maintain 
the posting period variant in the SAP system. So this is a one of an important month month end activity which need to be taken care of because if you don't open a new period on the last day of the last month in the very next day the your business will be set because none of your business transactions is been able to post in the SAP system. So it will be a very very escalated thing which which is very very alarming for the company. Now moving up to the next now is post path document. So as said in the day and activity that we can find out whether a different parked document at the end at the day end or maybe at the month end what are the different parked documents in the system how we can go for that as discussed you have a transaction called compact discount journal so once you execute this transaction with this you can find the different parked documents so you need to take the company code you need to take the fiscal year you can take the date and then you can select the park document option over here and execute the report so once executed you find that this is a document which is parked that means this has been parked but it has not yet been posted in the system that means it has not got any financial impacts in the company as of now so now what I want is I want this particular document to be posted in the system so what you need to do is you need to take up this document number over here and you need to go to the transaction FBV0 to post this transaction so executing the transaction FBV0 enter so what I would be doing is I now I would be taking up the document number over here and then the company code and the fiscal year 2014 now I enter on the screen so as you can see post park document so as I enter it will take me to the document the park document as on the screen and you can see over here if you want you can make the changes to it as you wish to and once the changes have been done you can go and you can you can click on to this post option over here on the header so as you can see there is a post option so once you click on to this post this particular part document now will get posted into the system okay okay so now click on to the post okay probably the period is closed so that is what the concern is okay so now I click on to the post enter and you can see now that the document is being posted in the system so as you can see the message being generated the document 10009 was posted in the company code 1000 so similarly what you need to do is you need to search the various parked documents in the system as lying and you need to post those parked document or you need to delete those parked documents as not required so that is another month end activities which need to be taken care of now moving up to the next is complete bank reconciliation bank reconciliation basically we discussed in detail in the banking part where we need to do the bank reconciling from the company's bank account and the the bank account or the bank statement which we receive from the bank side and in case there are any differences the reconciliation has to be done appropriate proper bank reconciliations we have covered in the banking part for which I would request you that you should refer to the bank reconciliation session where we discussed how a bank statement can be uploaded with 
FF67 transaction and then the reconciliation of banks can be done. So we'll not be covering that over here in detail because it's a it's a big part uh, which has been covered in the banking and you can revisit the banking part for bank reconciliation. Moving to the next is automatic clearing. Now autom there are two way outs of doing the clearing is manual clearing and automatic clearing. As a month end activity, the organization or the company needs to do their clearing activities part whether they do it through manually or through automatic it's up to them how they want to proceed with the clearing of the of the various things so for vendor clearing we discussed there is a transaction f-44 then there is for customer clearing there is a transaction f-32 for GL GL to GL clearing there is F-03 is there. So these all different clearings we have discussed in detail when we covered the general ledger accounting, then the vendors, accounts payable and accounts receivable. And for all those manual clearing of vendors, customers or ledger account, you can revisit those. Now for the automatic clearing, in for the automatic clearing what happens is even that we have discussed in an automatic clearing session if you remember earlier or you can revisit that in that you need to define the rules for clearing and if the proper rules for clearing has been defined then the system does the automatic clearing of those customers or vendors or ledger accounts as the rule specifies so for automatic clearing we need to execute the transaction f.13 and if we move on to the screen for f.13 as I am executing the report so you can see over here it shows you the automatic clearing screen where we need to put the company code the fiscal year and then the posting date from which date to which date you want to do the clearing suppose I want to do the clearing for a particular quarter so I selected the date now again for which part you want to do the clearing that need to be selected whether you want to do the clearing for vendors or whether you want to do the clearing for customers or you want to do it for the GL accounts which of these you want to do the clearing of so suppose I does the clearing for GRIR account so I can select my GRIR account over here you can select the GLIR account we can search that over here in the system so suppose I search the GR IR account as it is over here and I want to do the clearing for this particular GL only that's it so what I can do is I can run it in the test run part first so you need to put these parameters the company code fiscal year posting date then you need to select the GL and then you need to run this in a test mode so once I run this over here now executing the report in the test run okay 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 let me change the date so now all right the date posting date need to be opened so let me open the posting date so I have executed the report over here now as you can see on the screen that the documents which have been reflecting onto green to you are those which are which are ready for automatic clearing that means that the automatic clearing rules are are been applied and are been properly applicable on these part but those which are not green they will not be allowed for clearing now the rule says that the purchasing documents should be same as over here and the second thing it says is the debit should be equal to the credit so that is over here and the debit should be equal to credit means ultimately the net is equal to zero so that is over here been matched 
So once this has been done, that means you can go for automatic clearing. Similarly, if you go for page down, you will find further more documents to the same as over here on the screen. One more document is there, which has got the same purchase purchasing document and it's been ready for the clearing part. Moving down even, it may be that you may find more of such documents. So the documents which are in green, only those documents can be cleared automatically in the system. But those which are not green, that means they are not, the rules are not properly been applicable to them. So they could be because of the debit is not equal to credit or maybe the purchasing document are not matched or maybe the rules are not been followed properly. So if you find that it is okay, you can go back to the same and you can now move down and you can take this test run off and then you can execute it in the background. So what you need to do is you need to take this test run off from over here and you need to go to the program and then execute in background. So you need to select this execute in background as I clicked onto this the system gives a warning message to you that this program run is a production run. So you need to enter on the screen as I entered and now a new screen is being generated in front of you. So you need to select your output device over here and then click on to continue. Once it has been done, now we need to go to click on immediate so as to do the automatic clearing immediately. So click on to the immediate and then moving down you need to click on to the save option over here. So once I click on to the save as you can see now a background job was scheduled for program SAPF124. Now this background job is the one which will work your automatic clearing. So all those documents which were been marked green those documents will get cleared with the help of this job. So to have a look of this job that what does this job does we need to go to the job. So for that I can go to this system over here then click on to on job and search for the job program SAPF124. So you can see over here this is it which need to be checked. So this is the job. Refresh it. And this is the one which will does all the clearing activities for you. So as you can see now, earlier it was been released. Now it has been active. Active means that the clearing is in process. And now you can see that it has moved to, as I refreshed it again, it has been moved from active to finished. That means now that the cleaning activity has been done. So you can select this and you can go to this pool over here and you can check this pool. So this pool will, will show you all the options. So you can click on to this type that is the ABAP type and we'll find the list of documents which have been cleared. So you can see over here on the screen, these are the documents will, will be cleared on the screen. So this is how you need to do your automatic clearing into the SAP system for all the open items which have the proper rules maintained for them. So that is what how we covered the automatic clearing part. Now moving on to the next is recording entries. Recording entries basically refers to the entries which occurs on a very very everyday basis or every month basis. So means recurring refers to those which happens again and again. So transactions which have the fixed amount, fixed ledger accounts means the fixed journal entry just the date needs to be changed. In such a kind of a cases the recurring entry concept is used. In the recurring entries what happens uh, we need we create a template for the transaction 
which need to be done again and again like for rent you have got a, a set of uh, uh, accounting entries just the date need to be changed because the rent is a fixed amount similarly it could be for lease amount it could be for interest so these are certain cases where where in a big organizations these kind of entries even are huge so for repeating those entries again and again what can be done is a template can be made for those transactions and those transactions uh, template can be executed again and again just with changing the dates so that is what the recurring entry concept is all about so we'll discuss that in detail in the SAP system so in the recurring entry we'll be looking after how we create a recurring entry then how we can change the recurring entry document uh, as per the next month how you can go for a changing the amount or the date in them and even if you want you can display the recurring document with FBD3 then displaying the changes in the recurring document executing the recurring entry running batch input sessions and evaluating recurring entry document so these are the part of recurring entry which we will be covering in the SAP system now so let's move on to it now in SAP some business transactions are repeated regularly every period or quarter such as rent insurance royalties SAP gives the recurring entry option to make this entry one time and run it every period and have the same financial effect recurring entries in the system are only a reference document and has no accounting impact so what SAP provides is we can create a reference document which is known as a template and that same template can be used again and again whenever it can it is needed for every month postings where in the template your debit and credit entries your loan number your amount everything will already be there you just need to change the date and you can post that particular recurring entries the first transaction to create the entry is FBD1 enter so once you enter you can see the screen enter recurring entry in this what you need to do is first of all you need to put your company code over here that is 1200 now over here we need to put the first run date and the last run date the first run date means the date from which the first recurring entry is to be carried out the last run date means the date until which the final rec recurring entry is to be carried out now in this you can have whatever the amount or the period you know that you have to pay for the recurring entries you can take that much of amount or a gap like for example if you know that the rent you, you, you will be paying would be maybe for two years so you can put the two years of calculation over here as a first run and the last run for example suppose I take as 01112014 till 01102015 for 11 months so I know that this is the rent which I have to pay from this to this date and if there is anything else which you know that from an uh, last run date like for insurance premium the, the the last run date could be much more larger than this so you can calculate and you can put that last run date on the system so the system will will take this uh, calculations month on month or quarterly basis as you want till that particular last run date so you need to first take the first run date then the last run date now this next is to interval in month so in this you can you can have a look now over here you to decide the date up to until which the final recurring entry is to be carried out so over here you can decide that whether the recurring entries which will be done will be done monthly two monthly quarterly or how 
so suppose I pay the rent monthly so I will be taking the per month over here so these are the three things which you have to take over here the next thing you need to take is the next thing you need to take is the document type so in the document type we take SA because we are going for a for a GL to GL posting so SA will be taken as a document type otherwise if you are going for a recording entry with release into a vendor then in that case you would be taking K, KA or something else in that moving to the next is the currency that is USD now once we have done this we will be making the entry over here posting key the posting key will be 41st to for debit and 50 for crediting something else so suppose I take the 40 and I need to select the GL over here what reckoning entry I would be making up so as of now you can see that there are only three GL account for expenses which are there in it so what we can do is we can create one GL account for expense for rent as well go to the new session FS00 expense profit and loss rent rent account control data you have to select the line item display over here moving next the field status group for expense will be G004 save it okay so every month I will be paying a rent so the entry for the rent will be the rent GL will be debited and the bank GL probably would be credited so with 40 posting key I will be taking rent because 40 posting key is for debit GL the GL which you want to debit so we'll be selecting the rent GL over here that is it you have taken the rent over here now you have filled this first page then what we have to do is to enter the screen it takes me to the next screen over here we need to put the amount of rent which I would be paying suppose I am paying for around four thousand dollars so we'll be putting up over here as four thousand dollar you can go to this more transaction for putting the business area so over here we need to take the business area as well now moving next you can write the text over here rent paid for month November 14 now over here you need to take the 50 posting key which will be credited so the now I am making the payment with the bank so I will be selecting bank for the credit part So suppose I take the bank over here on the credit part as outgoing bank that is city bank has been selected enter select the amount $4,000 business area and the value date the value date would be mm, so this is what you need to take now we have filled the debit and the credit part and we have taken the first run date and the last run date that is what is important and the interval on which this particular template need to be processed has to be taken that's what we have taken as well so now we can go to the simulate the document from this tab over here so you can see the the preview of the document over here and if you find this to be okay you can go and you can post it over here so once you post 
you find the document number has been generated 9009000. Now, this document number doesn't mean that it posts any value to the account. It doesn't post any value to the GL or to the account at all. This is that is why I just said that this is just a template. It doesn't update the values or it doesn't hit the value in any of the GL accounts anywhere else. This is just a template and on the basis of this template we can post the transactions on month to month basis without doing the repetitive work again and again. So now we have completed the first step that is we have just created the recording entry that is the template for the document. Now we'll be moving to the next that is to display the document that is FBD3. So we can go back over here slash n FBD3 to display this particular recording entry as been seen. So you can see the transaction display the recording entry. Enter. You can see the recording entry which we we just posted in the last part is over here on the screen and in case you want any changes to be done you can go to the transaction slash and fbd2 so as to change but mind it you cannot change all of those things what you can change is you can double click on to the rent or any of the line item and you can change these things over here if you want you can change the amount as well so it does happen at times that maybe there could be a small amount of fluctuation in the amount in case of royalties or in case of uh, uh, maybe something else uh, maybe insurance or something so in that case even you can go back and you can you can use the same template and you can change the amount and change the text as well like i would be paying the rent in the next month so i would be come back to this particular template i will be changing this text over here from november to december so when i will be paying the december month rent so i can make those changes over here and then i can save that particular document and then i can process that for the for the business transaction postings so that is what can be done so this is how you need to create the recording entry and this is how you can change the recording entry with fbd2 where you can change anything in it any you can change the amount cost centers business areas text anything in it because this is a template and te in template anything can changes can be done even if you want you can add further things into it into a, it as well now moving to the next is now how would be we would be posting this particular in the SAP system. So to post the transaction in the SAP system now, we need to go to the transaction code F.14. So when you go to execute F.14 so that we can post transactions into the system, F.1414 executing. So over here we need to enter the document number and the period for which the recording entry needs to be generated the session name can be entered manually for easy identification so over here we need to put the company code 1200 you need to put the fiscal year 12 or 2014 and now in this case over here we need to put the settlement period for which period you want this particular entry to be done or the transactions to be posted so suppose I am doing this for the month of uh, November I would be putting the month of November over or uh, uh, I think I did it for November or October okay November 30112014 and then moving to the next the most important part you need to put the document number over here so if you don't know the document number how can we get it you need to search that and then only you can put it over here so right now it is 9000000 as we know and this is what you must have to remember it mind it so if you don't know you can go back over here you can search and you can put it over here so now once this has been done you can go for processing it so you can go and execute option over here once you execute this your uh, transactions will get posted or uh, a batch will be created so executing the transaction now 
will generate a batch input session a batch input session gets created so now executing this and you can see over here session SAP F120 was created this is a batch input session which is which gets created that needs to be further processed so the session which is created at this footnote over here needs to be further processed either in the foreground or the background so as to so as to check that there is no error in the processing of the transaction if processed in the foreground each line item screen will come up and it is possible to change the values during the posting as well so let's move on to process this particular batch input session in the system so for that you need to go to the transaction code SAP SM35 that is the next transaction running batch input session SM35 so moving to the transaction slash and SM3535 enter now once you enter you can see you can find your session on the top of the list you must remember your session name so what so we have selected this and now we can go to process and this process we can select the first option that is foreground so that the screen will keep in front of us and in case we want to make any changes anywhere we can even make the changes in them so click on to the process and now you can see the screen so you can see the screen over here this is the first screen where the first run date is there now you can put the posting date is there and the doc the GL number is coming up over there enter it will take you to this next screen that is the 40 amount and the 50 means the credit GL that is the bank GL enter it takes you to the next enter keep entering so that the system take you to the next step so you can see now that the system over here the message comes is processing of batch input session is completed so once you get this message without any error it means your document has been posted successfully by the system so if you want to see the overview you can click on to the session overview so once you click on to the session overview you will find that the document that your session is no more uh, reflecting on the screen because the document has been posted in the system so this is how your recurring entries po uh, get posted into the system and in case you want to see that what was the recurring entry document number which took place or got posted into the system we need to go to the general ledger account that is the GL ledger account with the transaction FBL 3N so in this you need to select your GL for which you want to check so I just processed my recurring entry for rent account so click on to the rent account and now I can execute it and we can see the document has been posted to the rent account the document is 1000015 the business area is this and this and the rent paid for the month of November has been mentioned over here so this is how the things move and now the next payment run next recurring entry run which we will be doing it will be on 1st of December for the next month rent so this is how your recurring entry is done you can do these kind of a recurring entry templates can be created so as to save, take, uh, save a lot of time and manpower for any organizers and on the basis of this template you can process it faster and even even it can be automated so that the system can automatically generate and post the transaction if there is no changes but we always prefer to run it in in front of us so that we can check back at once that everything processed is correct so this is the uh, what we have covered today 
and uh, that is the day end activities and the month end activities even the month end activities have still been left which we will be covering up in the next training session as a continuing part of it so we'll see you in the next training session with the continuing of month end activities till then thank you take care